Hey everybody, welcome back to Chris Anderson Comics. I am Chris Anderson and I am joined today by my good friend Jamie Jones. How you doing, man? Doing great. Good. Let's talk some comics. Yeah, man. I've been I've been really Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, I've been meaning to have you on for a long time and we finally got a chance to do it. And I'm, I'm so glad, uh, like, uh, when we get together, we, uh, we like to talk the comics. So, uh, you know, this should be good. Let's do it. Um, so for your comic book gene pool episode, obviously you went with a Will Eisner book. Uh, you, you, you wear him on your sleeve, yeah. which is not a bad thing. I love Eisner. Uh, you know, when I was uh, growing up, my dad, you know, was born in 1928. So by the time the spirit started rolling out in the papers, he was all about it, you know, and he, my dad turned me on to comics and sequential art. And that was my Bible when I was, you know, like a teenager, just studying that thing over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I got to meet him one time very, very briefly in Chicago. Um, you got to meet him, right? Didn't you? No, you never got no. to meet him. Oh, I man. was, uh, I was pretty young when he died. So I didn't, I didn't get to see him, but he was in Florida and I was, you know, in retrospect, I was like, man, I could have, that could have actually happened. Yeah. Gone over yeah. to his house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a drag. Um, what was your first, uh, what was your first introduction to his work? I, was working at a comic book shop in Tampa and I picked up a collection. It was like the best of the spirit mm -hmm. collection. And that was the first thing I was 23. I picked it up and read it and then didn't draw comics for like three months. I, it just, it needed time to like sit and process uh, what I actually just read, you know, up until that point, up until Eisner, I had been, uh, basing art style stuff off of uh olivia coipel was a big influence on me uh a lot of the mike grell was a big influence on me right it was a lot of more of the the naturalistic guys yeah and then i saw eisner and i was like oh this is what i should be doing this is what comics can look like this superhero comics can look like this yeah in a way and i uh mm -hmm. really pushed in that direction yeah, uh, things got a little more cartoony. Things got a little more exaggerated. Uh, right, it seemed to it seemed to really click with me. So, it's wild that he you say superhero comics, but I guess it's more like pulp pulp comics, right? With the spirit more than like a right. superhero. Right, and he never. I don't think he did. Did he ever do a superhero comic? I don't think I don't think so. I don't not not in the traditional traditional sense. Yeah, which is kind of wild that he never like did a story with either of the what are now big two over the years or anything yeah. like that. I mean, I know he he had his own studio. I mean, he was he was the he was a boss man for most well, of his life, you know. I guess yeah, right? Like he made Uncle Sam. He was uh so like all of those characters back in all of the freedom force yeah. in, in DC now right. is we're, we're all Eisner Iger studio characters. So uh, I know he drew uncle Sam. There's a character called the midnighter that uh, Jack Cole did, which is okay. basically just the spirit, but that's a little more Jack Cole worked for that studio. Mm -hmm. um, the, a lot of people came in and through that. Jack Kirby worked for that studio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so there was a bunch of superhero stuff going out. Was he working on any of that? I don't really know. Maybe he was just inking. Maybe he wrote a bunch of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, sure I do know for a fact he did Uncle Sam. So right, right, right. Was, so maybe that's his big superhero character. But still, like, kind of feels more like a, a, a mythology right. god yeah. kind of character than a than a actual tights and nobody wore tights. That's what I'm trying right. to. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's yes. The thing. Um, yeah. And it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a shame that we never got to see what that would look like because he's so uh, you know, everything he does is so expressive. Um, it's like, you know, overacting on a stage would not be a good thing, but he took, the idea of somebody like overacting on a stage and put it into into comics and 
it made the language of comics even better. Yeah. Well, he's a big, he was a big theater guy, right? Yeah. His dad was a uh, set painter and set designer during the depression. So he was, you know, a kid growing up on stage, doing all of that stuff, seeing like Iser's whole big thing is, you know, it's a street if there's a lamppost. Mm -hmm. uh, and that comes from, or what people say it comes from is the fact that his dad worked <laughs> as a set dresser in during the depression, all they could afford was a lamppost kind of right, thing. Right, right, yeah. Exactly. that correctly and it becomes the whole, the whole scene is a lamppost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, you, I mean, we could go on and on about the guy, but the book yeah. that you, the book that you chose was uh, Eisner's uh, New York Big City, a book that I knew of sort of, but I had never, I've, ne I'd, I've never read it. And it, I don't know that it comes up all that much. It's a super interesting book because it's almost like, it's almost like an exercise that he's doing for himself in many yeah. ways. Yeah. It's a lot of one pagers. It's a lot of couple, just a couple page stories. Uh, it seems to be something that came around maybe later on in his life where he was mm -hmm. just like, I've got all these things or, or maybe they were on the chopping room block at uh, for, you know, Dropsy Avenue or something. And he just yeah. was like, let me put all of that material that I have um, into one book. So you'll see like in the contents that it's like broken up into subways, stoops, garbage, street music, sentinels, windows, walls, block, all things that, you know, if you were to write, uh, give me one word and describe a city. These are sort of like, you know, iconic things that you'll see in a city. Um, so he's like, says it's like, I have here undertaken a series of vignettes built around nine elements, which taken together are my portrayal of a big city any city. Seen from afar, major cities uh, are an accumulation of big buildings, big population, uh, and big uh, ac ac carriage. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, for me, it is not quote unquote real. The big city, as it is seen by its inhabitants, is the real thing. The true picture uh, is uh, in the crevices on the floors and around the smaller pieces of its architecture where daily life swirls. Uh, yeah. So like, he's just sort of like breaking down, breaking down the city, taking a closer, closer look at things. You get this cool, like pencil drawing with a little bit of ink wash. Um, these, this is, these are some of my favorite things about this book. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the, the in between sections that it's just pencil, uh, he used a huge pencil. That was something that I, I've learned from guys that studied under him at, at uh, what, where was it? SDA. 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 Yeah. And uh, they were like, yeah, Will just used a giant pencil. Like one of those ones that you give a, like a, a kid who's just learning how to write. Those yeah. Fat yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I immediately went and bought like a five, 0.8 millimeter pencil when I found out about that. And that's what I use now. Is it is. Like huh? A lot of the DNA stuff for, for this episode is just like, what size brush was Will Eisner using? What size yeah. pencil was he using? Let me figure that out for myself. Yeah. There's so many stories about him too. Like, uh, you know, talk, telling people like to how, how much they need to take care of their brushes and things and like, preserve them well and how yeah. like you can make a brush last for 25 years if you take good care of it and man i try to take good care of my brushes and they don't they don't last that long i am not great at it <laughs> i always just forget to wash them half the time yeah. you know um so it starts out here with this sort of tr the treasure of avenue c and you get this like uh, this drainage under the under the sidewalk, this kind of drain, and you see what it looks like, and you know, he, it goes as as your eye travels down, it travels to the city here, you know, um, and like fades. It's almost like a like a cinematic fade down, and then you see like the top of the grate. I think he just kind of used his um, his 
ink water after he'd clean like rinse his brush off to just randomly yeah that's what he, that's what he says he just yeah. uses dirty water uh, which i think in this book more than other books it's kind of obvious that he's using inconsistent ink washes because it's just like yeah i dip it in and then i then it goes um i love i love the different the subtle different uh inking darknesses just yeah. from uh even in that you know that cityscape that the the far the far ground the background yeah uh, has some white some darker wash and then darker wash on top of it that doesn't seem to necessarily need to be there it's just there yeah right it's just like a textural element that it's not it, i don't think it's representing any more buildings mm -hmm. i just think it's, it's just an inconsistency in the ink um, yeah when you're just using your your rinsed water it's uh you know it's it's going to be unwieldy you're not controlling you know how dark it is i mean i imagine yeah. if that's what he's doing he'd have to go over it multiple times to make it darker yeah yeah um so it starts out with the ring and then you got this guy who's like you know trying to uh follow this girl from their hometown to uh <laughs> into to, to the big city and she's basically like a prostitute and he's like no you're better than that marry me and she's like hell no i don't you know my pimp will beat you up get out of here <laughs> <laughs> and he has this ring and she drops it down into this into this grate and he walks off so that's kind of how we open this thing yeah no panels no, no panel panels. borders it's no great panels. you don't need it or no. i guess the panel is the is the great right like that's the the framing. right that's that's the stage right yeah yeah yep. this whole book is pretty depressing it's really depressing There's it's really it's kind of the worst of humanity yeah it's, it's i think it's definitely a reflection on what he you know he he wasn't living in the city maybe he was it's the 80s uh this book came out in the 80s maybe he was just like on just really disinfatuated with <laughs> with the city at this point yeah yeah it's not a positive portrayal of it that's for sure but i love the i love the uh like the atmospheric perspective of the buildings here where it's just drawn in wash yeah yeah it's incredible you know and then in this one where she's like kind of walking away it's just sort of like abstract version of the city you know it's not even what it would really look like but it it's super effective uh and then you know you just get these moments where this guy is sort of like messing around with a coin and he drops it into the grate and oh well walks off and you get this scream and this guy coming out with a knife in his hand and drops the murder weapon down there and you know they can't they can't find it find him whatever he's completely yeah. off the ground running like there's he's, yeah he's so high it's such a wild choice it really is you know, but you know that he's booking it. I mean, there's, yeah. no, there's no doubt about it. It really shows the purse. I think that's maybe the reason to do it, right? Yes. I mean, I guess he could have, like, ha I mean, there, there's other choices to make, but yeah, like, definitely, definitely shows the purse off. Um, And then you get this thing with uh, 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 this guy's, like, I guess a married man or something, right? Yeah. And uh, she's trying to give him a key. Or he... Yeah, he, she's trying to give him a key, like key to her place or something like that. Or is it a ho hotel? But anyway, like, re wh however it is, she, she drops, drops the key in. And then you get to this, the treasure. This is great. So then you got these kids who are just messing around and they got gum on the end of a string. And they start pulling up all this stuff. There's a ring and there's a knife. So all the things that we saw drop down there, <laughs> you know, and this is the treasure. Yep. And again, with his ink washes here, I mean, if, if he's just using, you know, yeah. ink water, it's 
he's doing a really great job with it. Yeah, it's incredible. We kind the of in interactions, it. Eisner's interactions are my favorite, like physical bodies touching physical bodies. Yeah. There's, it's uh, it's my favorite stuff. Jack Davis also has a similar quality. And, it, and especially this era, Will Eisner feels more like Jack Davis. Jack Davis, than, yeah. Uh, That's a so good he must, have, he must have found something. It, it's especially in the shoes. They feel like Jack Davis shoes. Yeah. Um, I just now noticed this kid has a hole in his shoe. It's yeah. Great. It's brilliant. Yeah, and you can see the you can see the nails in it. Yeah. You know, they're not rich kids, I guess. <laughs> no. And like, yeah, you know, this is like must be like the 70s, right? Is when this was made. I feel like yeah, it. Uh, it came out in the 80s. It so it's definitely him talking about the it's Eisner never I don't think Eisner ever wrote about the time period that he was in. Especially no. so especially late in his later career, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's all this kind of pseudo. You just uh, start I guess when you get to that age, you just start boiling down life as into like this generalization of yeah, you know what you feel like it is. You know, you get a lot classic. of beat mix later on in this book, so I think mm. it's definitely he's just like concerned with <laughs> with the seventies. Yeah, that's what he imagines. There's another cool pencil drawing of these places. His buildings and stuff are great. I mean, obviously this guy lived there and. Yeah. And 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 knows it like by heart. This almost looks like a plain air drawing. Yeah, it does. It, I, I imagine it it probably is. Just how would, quick how like some of these lines are just like little squiggles. Like yeah. all in the all on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. It's just textural. It's not really it's not really representing anything. It's just solid cartooning. Yeah. Yeah, he used the pencil, and then he went in and ink washed it too. So I wonder if these were like studies, you know, preparing for the book or something. It, maybe it also might have been studies. You know, he was a teacher, so yeah. it might have been like, "Hey, all the kids are going out and drawing." That's true. I'm draw with them. That's true. I could see that. Let me get stoops. Even, Even here, you see a lot of the line work in uh, that he's using in that, you know, kind of really rough drawing in in some of the 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 defining. I don't what is it the the threshold of the house mm -hmm. it kind of has yep. like these little squiggly lines and it's coming down. I don't know. Yep. It's uh, it looks like he used a quill on here, which is pretty interesting because he wasn't really a quill guy, you know. No. Yeah, it's it's a it's almost Hugo Pratty. In yeah, this world. yeah, it's it's uh, um, it says 81 here on his signature, so yeah. And then, uh, yeah, like you said, like, uh, like, like not the best qualities of humans. You get this thing where this <laughs> yeah. this woman's walking home. This guy comes out and just snatches her purse away from her, knocks her down. You know, pulls out a knife, threatens the guy, the people on the stoop. We were shaking their fists like, "Hey, that ain't right." But you know, it ain't right. But you know, they weren't about to get up and help her either. So she shakes her fist right back at them. And they're like, yeah, 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 whatever. That's great. It's lit in such this top that top panel is lit in such a wild way. Yeah, it's like so, it's so bright here and then so dark here. Yeah. The composition of it's so great, but it's like it has nothing to do with the lighting of the entire piece. It's just this one thing. We're gonna really have heavy dramatic lighting for dramatic sake that's really what it is yeah i can see here like in the first one where he's got this like street lamp here sort of lighting it but it doesn't feel like it's nighttime you know but no. it's still, still got the dark here and the shadows are being cast that way so maybe those are on and that's why it's like that but it's still like you said doesn't feel like it with the rest of them i don't know <laughs> it's such it's just like 
a lot of this stuff, I've been looking at a lot of New Yorker cartoons and a lot of New Yorker covers recently, mm -hmm. and it feels like that's in the direction that he's trying to go in a lot of these just individual panels. Um, it seems more, it feels more editorial than it does uh, story-based. Mm -hmm. That is, which I really love, but it is very different than this. Is why I love this book. It feels so different than a lot of Eisner books. Yeah, it's it's kind of this. It's for me. It's more about the the actual art of it than it is the than it is the stories of things. Um, yeah. So we get here supper time. This woman up here is calling out. Joe, her husband, or whoever is sitting up on the stoop. And this then this guy's Ch uh, Chuck's wife calls for supper and and you get this guy here and just sort of like eating his dinner all by himself at the bottom. and that's end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> They're just these moments, and none of them, some of them just feel like they don't really mean anything at all, and they don't really have to. I wonder what he's drawing on for this, like, for inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, it's just ideas, kind of. The funny thing, too, is from that last one, if you really want to examine it, like, this is clearly nighttime now. And he, right. hasn't, he hasn't lit this stoop nearly as harshly as he lit the last one. Right, right. But I love this cast shadow with the with the wash. Oh, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, he's so observant. Even the shadows of the guys sitting on the stoop. Yeah. They're so placed. They're so grounded. Yes. Even this one's great. And there's a thing that he's doing in that final one where it's if it's a vertical line, the cast shadows done this way. And when it's horizontal, it's going this way when it's going up. It's, it's genius. It's subtle. It's a thing that painters do mm -hmm. right? when they have uh, the light spot, the light source is going in the direction of the, of, of the plane of the face. Right. Exactly. Yep. It's not something I necessarily always think of in drawing. In, in black and white. It's something yeah. I should think of in black and white, but it's not, yeah. it's the furthest thing from my mind. Yeah. I try to, I try to remind myself of that when I'm inking and if I'm doing some sort of feathering or hatching, you got this, uh, this like spotlight almost here too, which is. Yeah. It's so subtle. Yeah. I mean, the guy's been at this point, like, working in in comics for almost 50 years you know yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i gotta yeah. keep reminding myself of that <laughs> it's it's because he started in like the late 30s i think yeah when did hawks of the sea come out i can find out i don't know the exact date on that i've got a collection somewhere it's somewhere So you got this one of this, this home, this guy's coming home. He comes up to, you know, everybody, the family greets him. You got this girl sitting here, you know, just reading her book. And, you know, he's home and yay, glad to see his family. But he just keeps coming out and looking at this girl and finally comes out. You know, that's what he he's really happy to see when he gets home. It's yeah. Whoever this young lady is. And again, it's just a moment. You know? Yeah, it's something you don't have to tie it together with anything. You don't have to do anything. It's just, yeah, two pages done. Here's an idea. And uh, here's these guys playing stoop ball, which you know I'm not from. <laughs> I'm not from anywhere where there were stoops growing up, so I'm yeah. not exactly even sure how to, how one plays this. But uh, you know, they're anyway. They they like throw the ball at the stoop and then you go and you got to catch it like on the other side, I guess. And this guy like smashes his face in a fire hydrant <laughs> and then it bounces off and smashes through a, through a window here. You know, I'm sure I'm sure stuff like that happened all the time. If that's, that's yeah, how the yeah. game goes. Great elevated train here. Yeah. And this sort of market going on. 
it's not in perspective. It's so, it's like, it's not perfect. No, and 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 neither is in that not perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I love God. I love this one. Yeah. Like, how do you even? How do you even know what that would have looked like? Like, unless you went down into these, like when you're on the yeah. train, you don't see what this looks like. You know, when you're on it. Yeah, it's all, wild. All you're seeing is stuff going by really fast. So, like these sort of catacombs and these drawings, and I loved, you know, the way that he shows the motion is by having these papers fly through the air, and then this train yard. It's a hot mess, but you know that's what it'd be. What was the title of this one? Oh, subways. Okay, so. You got this this house here that the train the elevated trains going by and it just shit rattling all the dishes, you know. It's great. So this one's called Affair on the BMT local. And uh you go through like what all of these people are thinking. Like this guy's dentist is telling him he's losing his teeth. <laughs> it's and saying, Okay, you're hired. Do you think you can handle the job? We're a happy family here. And this one is like, wife is like, got five o'clock shadow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and clearly like nagging him. So I'm sure he's like super psyched to get home. This one's doing the, you know, grocery list. This one, she's getting like knocked out by her husband or something here. Like, geez. This one's the someone heavy, died in the family. The heavy black on the foreground characters yeah. is something that I do all the time. And it's from this particular panel <laughs> that I saw it for the first time. I went, Oh, I could just, it gave me permission to just be yeah, like, yeah, it, it, it adds depth to it. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty great. And then you get to these two, which is interesting because this yeah. entire page is just set up for what is going to happen. It's just giving permission or setting up what the 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 idea is. Right. For I this, find it strange because these guys are inked in the heavy black, and then their thought balloons, are, they're you know uh, are um, in wash. Yeah. And it's the opposite here, where they're in wash and they're. Yeah, I wonder if it was superimposed in. Um, it almost looks it. Yeah, it's interesting. So they're think they just kind of glance at each other, and you know, she's thinking, uh, "Hey, they're like you know, running into him and having this whole idea of them uh, falling in love, you know, getting married." You know, she thinks that he imagines him to be like a like a junior partner in a law firm, you know, and everything's going to be great. And then he's imagining that she is like, uh, what was she? Like somehow she had money. She, yeah. Yeah. Oh, her she's father's going to leave like, money. Yeah. And yeah, then also yeah. she's like great in the sack. Yes. Oh, and she calls him a magnificent stud. Oh yeah. Is, <laughs> Yeah, Eisner doing sexy stuff is always my favorite Eisner. It hits in a way like when he does sex, there's something about it that's just so <laughs> I don't know. It is over dramatic, it is melodrama, but he likes figures so amazingly. It yeah. feels like a romance novel. It, there's something about it that I it might be because I like the way he draws figures inter intertwining. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. And this the one's really crazy. Yeah. Oh, darling, let's do some more kinky sex. I love it. Let's try yeah. this. And this, like in the movie Deep Tonsil. It's like, oh, uh, Will, no one yeah, wants to yeah. think about you watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd have to go to the theater at this point to even know what that is. <laughs> right, right. Um. You know, and then obviously, uh, 
you know, she has to leave the train and nothing happens. But you get him thinking this little bubble of her, you know, her, she's, and she's like fading away too. Like fading away. Yeah. Yeah. That's just great. Yeah. So good. And here we get theater. <laughs> this, this is my favorite strip in the entire, in the entire book. It's hilarious. So yeah, he's like riding along and this is the window of the train as they're going by, you know, and he sees this window and it's just, you know, it's just a split second as they're going by. Yeah. But you get this woman like in her underwear and this guy and he's like putting his clothes on and they're having some sort of argument. And then all of a sudden he like grabs her and, and, uh, you know, clearly they're about to, uh, uh, you know, have sex and he's like, trying to get to get as much of a view as he can before, you know, just going back to reading. It's so good. It's so good. The way he spots black too, is just another thing. That's, uh, it's, it's so great. It's so good. Yeah. The form yeah, is I, indicated I entirely to cover everything in black when it suited it. It's gorgeous. Um, this one's called Art, and it's just about these guys spray painting a train. Night Rider with the drunk. <laughs> Been on one or two trains like that. I love how cartoony he gets mm -hmm. in his later career. Like it's just so this this when he's singing at the guy. Yeah. <laughs> that second page it's like yeah what what gave you permission to draw that face like that it's so i love it i i want to be able to draw that face like that you know and it, I, when, I, I tend to yeah. like lean back a little bit i mean i think the best cartooning is the thing that walks this line between not mickey mouse but also not entirely realistic you know mm -hmm. you've got this middle ground where you can tell these straight real life stories, but get the story across better for a reader of the, this visual medium with exaggerated expressions and you know things yeah. squashing and stretching that you can, would you know don't belong in reality. And he really figured it out, you know. He was so thoughtful yeah. about everything. So you get this, this one's a blackout or the train, you know, the lights go out and, and everybody's sort of like, uh, you know, this, the, some, some of them are getting a little panicked here. Yeah. Again, just these moments. Last man, he's rushing to reach the, reach the train and trying to push in a, like, you could just feel the weight of him. Yeah you know, trying to get into this thing, just struggling. And, you know, there's nowhere for anybody to budge. Nobody's reacting either. I love that. You know, it's just like, mm, can try, buddy. But yeah, and like, he's even trying to like push his ass in here. Like, yeah. pull it, you know, there's just, you really feel it in the body weight. And it's not an easy thing to capture. It's so hard. The pushing backwards is mm -hmm. such a, like the foot, is so planted on that that ground that it really yeah. feels and it's crazy because there's no shadow on the ground there's nothing actually indicating ground right. it's just, just a, indicating you know. it's it's a master stroke of crazy proportions it's just the ground is there we recognize that it's there we don't have to draw the ground what how yeah <laughs> how do we do this Yep, and then train's gone, and you get these these papers flying through again. <sighs> so good. Another pencil drawing here, and even just his garbage can. Like, look at that. Yeah, he perfected that during uh, a contract with God. I think I think he perfected the garbage can. So you got this one with cans and this guy's trying to get his baby to sleep and it's like three o'clock in the morning and you know, he, 
he's so tired and finally gets the baby to sleep and then you know it's uh six the o'clock in the morning come, yeah. <laughs> and the cans are going uh, i can relate to this one the lettering the the clang yes of like the overlay what, what not something i would ever think to do not something no no this is particularly wild and you yeah. can feel it like vibrating and that's what it is yeah. you know um i find that i get like my a lot of my lettering uh inspiration from going over uh, his work you know yeah he really used it to, to, as part of the story, and it's something that you just can't. You, I mean, I won't say you can't, but it doesn't look right if you do it digitally. You know, it has yeah. to be part yeah. of the artwork. Sure. Yeah, I, I use a lot of whenever somebody hits the water, like a sploosh, and mm -hmm. it's, it is the water being hit off the ground, that kind of thing. That's a very Eisnery stroke. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. For like every uh, like uh, intro page, how he would incorporate elements of the scene with the lettering mm -hmm. was a stroke of genius on his part. I don't know where he got that from, but not enough people do it to this day. You know, this one's really weird because it reads vertically. Yeah. Yeah. And it was weird when I read it just again and I was like, why did he do it this way? I it think works. That, yeah, weird. I think that I didn't read it vertically, and that's why I don't didn't really understand what kind of what was happening in it. But he really he does split the page. Yeah. He does. With a hard black line. Yep. It's just a weird uh it's a weird way to Weird way to write. That's weird. again. It's this book is so weird and experimental that it's like he was like, ah, I can spend two pages doing a weird thing that doesn't work in comics. I mean, he's experimenting into his eighties. Yeah, we should all be so lucky to have a career like that where we right. can still screw around, you know. The source. So yeah, you get this trash can. The cat's trying to eat out of it, and this. This lady comes picking through, finds a scarf, you know, cat, cat's still trying to get around there. You know, this guy pushes him out of the way, finds some sort of booze. This guy goes and picks through it, finds an old, finds a newspaper, lady throws a cigarette in it, you know, it, uh, it, it lights up and flames and, and poor cat, you know, there's nothing left for it, but, you know, probably got a bit of heat left from it since it's smoking, so it kind of curls up and sleeps next to it. But, yeah, like, uh, that's pretty ingenious thinking about how something that is that we use to throw something away and forget about it has this thing that where it gives back, yeah. you know, more than we throw away, you know, to, to other people, like heat and food and you know, booze if you're addicted <laughs> or, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a pretty interesting thought. I love this. Why is the garbage of the rich always smaller than the garbage of the poor? This is an editorial cartoon, right? Like, that's just what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not... Uh... That's an interesting observation. I'm not so sure that that's true and um, except for maybe because the rich are is a one resident house and the poor is probably many many more people <laughs> yeah <laughs> then the, but then the second one has there's a garbage strike so who's yeah. paying the most to, <laughs> to yeah yeah oh yeah yeah another fantastic drawing look at all these people yeah just circles and circles in a triangle for the most part. I mean, he draws a fantastic New York that feels lived in. Pope draws a fantastic New York that feels lived in. Neither one yeah. of them use a ruler, I feel like. I think there's I something think to that. That's that's such a huge 
thing, there's it vibrates, right? Like yeah. not using the ruler and then having your like even the 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 construction of of the subway mm -hmm. uh, of the train, you know, being not it's just kind of scribbled in. It yeah. kind of feels hot. It kind of feels like it's shaking. Mm -hmm. It's guys who are concerned with illustration versus guys that are concerned with I, I, like that's a that's a thing. I don't I don't feel like I'm concerned with illustration when uh -huh. I'm drawing. Uh, so maybe that's a me thing. <laughs> uh, but guys that are concerned with illustration always do something that's like, oh, of course, of course, that's how you draw that. Right. You're, right. you're concerned with the way it feels when you look at it. Painters yeah. do that all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. The key is walking the line between the two of those, I think, you know? Yeah. yeah. Even if you got to remind yourself to do it as you're working. Right. Street music. So this is pretty great. You got this guy with these big ass headphones on. Mm -hmm. um, my brothers were like this is 81 so they were like in they were in college so definitely had these around the house yeah. you know and they were just they were just radio headphones or whatever you know <laughs> and then you got this guy with his boom box and you got this like salvation army band and he even includes like probably the horns honking of the cabbies and yeah yeah people, yelling people are arguing and the, yeah yeah music isn't necessarily uh you know melodic music it's just the noise of the city again look at the bridge and the atmospheric perspective with the wash just like faded in there's no holding line on it uh it's great it's great it's almost just it's just set there it's not even it's so faint yeah and then again the the train there it that's all pen right that's all that's all yep. nib yep that's all nib Yep, the building's all nib, you know, till he gets to the figures. Then it's brush. Ugh. The brushwork, man, it's just... Oh, it's incredible. You got to allow yourself to, re like, sit back and relax in, and, and, and not get uptight when you're using a brush. You just have to let it Yeah. Go. Yeah. And he's really great at doing that. And then you get this, like these these people coming together, basically, you know. Oh, the most happy story in this entire story, in yeah, this entire yeah, yeah. Book is these people trying to profess their love to each other. But there's but all they these can't hear each other talk. Yeah. And the and the balloons are so big, and the writing in the balloons are almost like exploding out of it. Yeah. Uh, and they're so tight. I I I've been listening to your. I've been watching the show for a long, long time and there's the, but the Andrew McLean episode, y'all were talking about how much room Andrew mm -hmm. leaves in the, in the balloons. And yeah. I was like, Oh, and I picked this book where there's really like, what does that do? It really, uh, it grounds the balloon in one certain thing, right? If it's, if you've got enough space around it, it works. And then you can do stuff like this, where it's just like really big letters almost bursting out of the balloon every single time a really small letters in a big balloon it makes it sound like they're whispering yeah I, that's a big eisner thing that's a big that's, thing that i take from eisner uh, yeah there's there's so much that you can take from him and that's 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 a huge thing that i got from his lettering too like that's what i'm that's what i mean like everything is thought thought through like there's a reason why these letters are huge and crowded you know it's and it, and it does make that create that atmosphere. Yeah, like no matter what, they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't get their words across. He finally he says, "I love you," and like she, and then the train comes and like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that is the like you said, that is the happiest one of them all. So you get this like street band playing like he didn't I don't know what I don't know what he thought of like hippies and stuff. But, you know, like he definitely makes them look like. Oh, yeah, they're, like they're clearly not his favorite thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, they're trying to have a conversation. He's listening. He's like, this guy's trying to just pay the money so that they'll go away. And then these these two guys come with their boom boxes. Yeah, it seems to me like he doesn't care about any of these people. It's no. he's only concerned with the people that he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. Everyone is it's only things that he doesn't like about this stuff. Yeah, it's a really wild one. So the concerts, you got the the pearly buzzards here, you know. Uh, the jamming out at the university and then uh, you know they're called the freaky flakes later they're playing another gig and then they're at and then they're playing like uh, classical instruments you know yeah. in front of the museum and then someone comes up and says hey you want to do a wedding in Brooklyn big bread uh, can't handle it man like we got Times Square tonight and Needle Park tomorrow and the main entrance in front of the opera hall at the same night Shit, man, we got gigs coming out of our ears, Cheech. Yeah, it's great. It's so... Uh, well, you know, these great. guys would go on to be like, you know, our corporate overlords. So, yeah. you know, they were, they were hardworking hippies. That's all. This one's called Opera. Oh, this is, I think this is the longest story in this book. Yeah. This or, one. I, I say that it's three pages. It's, <laughs> there's been other three pages, but this one. Well, it's, it's packed. Months. It's yeah. packed more. Yeah. So this guy gets his phone call and says, Yes, this is your husband. Oh my God. You know, like, look at that lettering. It's so good. And it's big, you know? It's oh. Big yeah. and tall, and you know, he's shaking. And where did it happen? Oh my god, which hospital? Yes, he'll be right there. And his body language hanging up that phone, and and like you know, just in turmoil coming down. Look at the way that he uses the stoop and the and the like the architecture here. Oh, yeah, to, to be the panel border with the stairs. Ugh. And so he gets in the cab, you know, and he's, he's going, he's crying, he goes in, he comes out, and clearly she's gone. Yeah. You know? And so he's just, like, walking down the street. All oh, this stuff is happening. He probably sees none of it, you know? And then uh, he just kind of walks into the bar and orders a beer, and this music's playing, and that's it. He's got beer and a shot. His wife just died. Yeah. And it's all black. Yeah. It's just like we transition into the all black, right? Everything's mm -hmm. uh, the gray tones. And then he goes into, he opens the bar and it's just dark. And then you get the white circle of the, that centerpiece. Eisner's like the king of panels within panels. Yes. And focus. And it's uh, every single time. It never, it never fails. Yeah, and he'll always put a stark, either white or black, around it, the panel within the panel, too, you know, to frame yeah. it. Like, even here on this one, where it's just white around it. Yeah, yeah. This one was in um, Comics and Sequential Art. Uh, I don't remember what he was trying to convey with that, but I think it was with lettering, and that's probably a good one, you know, where yeah. she's just trying to get a hold of this guy across the street, you know, and she just can't, and then like, he's gone, and that was it. You know, they 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 decide they were gonna meet, but they didn't tell each other which side of the street they were gonna meet on. There's a thing he does in whenever people are yelling, he doesn't seem to draw punctuation. Yeah, no, they kind of just unless it's like a lot of exclamation points, but everything else is pretty punctuated. And I don't, I think that's, I, I, I didn't notice that until just now, but it's, it's a weird, I don't know. It's a choice. It is. Why not put a period after Joey? Does it, does it halt the reader too much? Is that what it's doing? Is, is it Maybe. suggesting one thing or another thing? Uh, Maybe because it's that a punctuation would mean to 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 pause or stop, and yeah. she's just going, going, going. And then you get a punctuation kind of with the with the Y in that middle panel with Joey, and it kind of explodes at the bottom. 
And it's like, is that the punctuation that you're doing? What like, how is your brain thinking to get to get to that point? Well, she's she, yeah, she's kind of broken at the end of this one, you know, and and also that warbled O. Oh, it's great. So it's supposed to be read like Joey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, like what the heck? That's the stuff that makes you think, you know, when you're creating your own books, like that's, in, that that's inspired, you know, who's doing that when, with their, with their, you know, yeah, like, like digital typeset lettering, nobody. Right. And it just adds so much. And then I'm not, I'm not trying to talk against digital lettering at all. I'm just saying that it, in certain circumstances, depending on the project, yeah, it really adds a lot. Yeah, You're really missing it in some projects that that don't make that choice. I try to do a, a I use a a font made out of my handwriting. Mm -hmm. One because it's so much faster, so much quicker. Right. But when there 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 are tons of moments where I'll just write the dialogue in, if it's got to be bigger, and that's and it works because it's. Thing. Yeah, and it works because the font that you have is made with your handwriting, so there's That's probably true. less. Of a, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Less of a juxtaposition between them. But I did that on purpose. Like right? I was like, I can hand letter all of these comics, or I can make a font, right? Uh, and then hand write some of the fonts, some of the dialogue. You got this one, Decibel man. This is my neighbor. She just doesn't know how to. <laughs> how to be quiet. <laughs> Some people just want everybody to know that they're there. Where are the comic books, miss? Like at the library, like. Everybody's talking so quiet. Somebody die or something. It's great. Look at this guy's face. This balloon is bigger than almost yeah. every panel <laughs> in that entire strip. I it's love great. it. I love it. You know, so even though like nothing's really happening of, of consequence to really many of these things and like they are an exercise, like that's what's so great about this too. And thank you for like having me grab this one is because it's, it, I'm putting it in the bank to use for later. Yeah, you know I mean? that's, I pull this book off more than any of the other Eisner books that I have. And I've got artist editions. I've got his sketchbook. I've got almost every Eisner thing that you can possibly find. And this is the one that I constantly go, oh yeah, New York, the big city, constantly. Yeah. It's the it's the one that has uh, so, there's just so much to it. Yeah. So you got rhythm here, this guy like banging on some bongos and like it's, it's rattling this, you know, uh, this uh, Monopoly man meets banker guy, you know, prude. Sentinels, uh, that's great. So like when you read through and you saw the thing, you know, the table of contents, I was like, what is Sentinels? And sent the Sentinels are just kind of these things that are standing around in the city, you know? Yeah. And his writing too, it's just so like he, he like almost poetic, you know? Along the channels of the city stand at Sentinels, guardsmen on an endless watch. So you got like a lamp post, you got a, a mailbox, you got a, a traffic light, fire hydrant, and this is a fire call box, which though yeah. there's none of those anymore. <laughs> you know? I doubt there were even those in the 80s. Yeah. That feels more like they let, like they went away in the 40s or something. But you got hydrant here. You got this vacant lot where this building has like crumbled here. And you can see into like the you can like the wall is gone yeah. on the side of the building and you can see the doors in the rooms. Like they half knocked it down. This place is boarded up. I just found out that they're going to be knocking down the buildings on the sides of me. And that's, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. It's going to be make, make it really great to when they start constructing, they're going to make like a, a like a, 85 unit housing thing where these two little houses are 
No, oh, wow. just found this out yesterday. Yeah. I'm like, oh no. So we're gonna have <laughs> construction for like years. Yeah, yeah. We gotta get out of here. How am I gonna record anything? <laughs> you know they're gonna start at like 7 a.m. and not finish until 10. Yeah. Um, so she goes out to the hydrant here and she brings up water and starts mixing up formula for the kid. And that's like the saddest thing. Like they're so poor. They live in this place, it's boarded up. Yeah. And like she can't even get her water. Like she's got this like wo little wood burning stove. You see, like the water is not even connected here to the sink. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's a good catch. It's he's so good at set design. Yeah, and I don't think it's the thing we talk about when we talk about Eisner, but his design sense for for these areas are so thought of. It's like everything he's pulling from, he's just pulling from reference. He's not even pulling from anything. He's just like, oh, yeah, I, re I remember seeing a thing that was unconnected. And it's a weird, uh, it's a weird way to, to the, the light isn't fixed. None of the lights are fixed to the top of the ceiling. Everything's yeah. just pulled down. It's all hanging by wires. Uh, it's it, he's he's so good at it you know there's an exercise that there's a I crack don't... in the wind in the mirror yeah even in the mirror yeah so um jeff johnson who did like uh you know wonder man in the 90s and uh like way of the rat and, and a few other things he mostly does like storyboards for animation now and stuff i think uh he sort of taught me this thing where when you sit down to draw a scene, he's like, just start writing down single words of things that come to your mind in an environment like that. Mm -hmm. And just start thinking, you know, spend 15 minutes writing just down these one word things. And eventually you're going to start to, to, to put together in your mind all of these little elements that you wouldn't have if you were like, uh, you know, got a script and it said, uh, you know, uh, sparse, sparse apartment or uh, you know like yeah. uh, run down and then you just if you just sat down and drew a box with like a couch in it and maybe a rip in the couch or something and maybe uh you know some water stains or something like that yeah. if you if you sit down and just give yourself a couple minutes to just start writing down words it'll get your mind flowing for all these other little details and yeah yeah it's a, it's a it was a great suggestion something i don't think i've maybe ever used and i really should yeah, yeah. Uh, because, you know, like, he must have some sort of exercise like that to have all these little details. Uh, he's obviously pulling it from experience, too. He's probably been in places like this. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's just, there's so much. Even the way that the, uh, like, there is a, a, a cloth over the chair that she's sitting mm -hmm. in. Yeah. It's just one extra element yeah like this doily kind of thing yeah so here's the the building uh not the building she lives in but the one next to it it burned burns down the fire department comes and uh sprays the fire down and they lock it out and now she has no water now that's the end of the story what yeah so bleak it's so bleak. It's so <laughs> bleak. <laughs> oh, man. And then you got, you know, uh, these kids, they're playing, trying to play this game of like pile up, I guess. And then they all fall down. I don't know. Um, you know, it's used as a seat. It's, this guy ties his, ties his foot on it. The, uh, the dog. Just, and then uh, you get uh, somebody parked a car and put a trash can over it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, hate to say it, but that might be something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you got Fountainhead. You got where this where this guy comes and he just sort of opens it up, and you know you get the neighborhood playing in the in the fire hydrant. You see that in like stories from the forties. Yeah. Yeah. And they all bring in their like flotation devices and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's great. But now here you got fire alarms. So like most of us don't even know what that is, really. You know, and 
you I guess you like you know something's going on you like pull it so you just got these like punk dudes I don't even know what they're supposed to be <laughs> you know like you know just kind of like drunk fools like this guy's got a crazy face I love how he blends into the the mailbox here oh it's gorgeous it's there's something there's this is what I try to pull at, as much as I possibly can from Eisner is like this kind of yeah we do the silhouette of the character and then there's a minor silhouette within them and it yeah. just fading characters into the background really bold character in the foreground faded character in the background we don't have to do a lot of stuff yep I, I don't know there's something about it that's and then when he comes into focus the mailbox also comes into focus. Yeah. Yep. This feels like you, the wiggly run. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It, Character's it, no longer standing. <laughs> it gives it life and, you know, like they're goofing around. You know, they just pulled the, they just pulled the, pulled the fire alarm. Basically. We have cell phones now. We don't need those. <clears throat> right. So they're taken off. They go up uh, under the roof of this building and wait for the fire department to come. Hilarious. Hilarious. We got the fire department to come for no reason. <laughs> and then they turn around and uh, the building that they ran into is smoking and on fire. And like on fire. Fire. They can't yeah, get off the building. <laughs> Eisner so. doesn't draw anything. Nothing's half-assed. It's all, it's full-assed, every single thing. This is what he thinks of minor vandalism. Right, right, yeah. They can you burn. Funny. Atone for your sins. <laughs> so you got Mailbox here where she has this letter and she's just sort of like, doesn't want to, she's pregnant, you know. I'm assuming that she's sending a letter to like maybe the, the father to let him know or something. I don't know why I assume that. It just feels Eisnery. You know, you say that I didn't even. I wasn't even thinking. Oh, she's pregnant. But that third panel, definitely, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. No, oh, and that feel and with the rest of this book, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so she's like has second thoughts. This one woman comes up and like squeezes between her, like out of my way, lady. You know, puts it in there, and she's still thinking about it, about to do it. And just rips it up and walks away. Yeah. It's so bleak. Oh, everything's bleak. Everything is. Um, dead letter. This guy goes and drops drops his uh, letter into. No, he doesn't drop it in. What is he doing? He's looking at it. Now he's reaching in for some reason. I can't really tell why. And he's waiting because he didn't drop it in. I don't think. No, no. I don't. Uh, this oh, is yes. the one. He dropped the oh, wrong no, he... letter in. Got it. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. So he dropped. He's like, "Oh my god, I'm an idiot." You know, I got to get in this thing. Waits, waits around for the mailman to come. He's like, "Oh, that's the one. That's the one." He's like, "Give it to me." And the mailman's like, "No, no, 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 no. You don't. You keep. You can't mess with the mail." You know, everybody's like, "You know, that's a felony." Uh, and uh, you know, this cop comes and stops him and. It's like, ah, I guess I'll mail this one. That one's out. The stiff arm in that middle panel. This one here is great. Yeah. 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 So good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and this is something that I think more car cartoonists, I'll say comic book artists, um, because not all comic book artists are, are cartoonists in my opinion, but more comic book artists should study this kind of acting and gesture, you know, yeah. you know, everybody should be doing something. There needs to be life to it. Life yeah. to the characters. Uh, last minute mail, you know, this guy ran and he made it in time. Woo. Yay. Made it in time. This guy is like looking around mails this letter. You know, he's just a shady, a shady character. Um, I love that figure too. That this figure guy? walking away. Yeah. Oh. The subtle, like hot spot on the back of the shoulders. Right here. Right. Yeah. It's and good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yep. Uh, and here with the, it's like, you know, this kid 
you know, the, and the old man, he helps him, helps him mail, mail the letter. And that's basically all it is. But you get this great little thing with this framing. Yeah. Light, light panels just to break it up. He also does this thing in that third panel on that one. He doesn't draw the rest of the old man's mm -hmm. clothes. He yeah, lets so you can the focus on boy. the kid, right? It's brilliant. It's genius. It's a. It's such a good. You know, it's it's one of those things when you're drawing a background and you don't connect it to the to the figure. You let the figure kind of sit within this halo of information or no information. Mm -hmm. It's great. They almost look like they're completely drawn in quill too, but maybe maybe there's brush there. Yeah, who knows? But you know, here you get the city, you get these signals, and like get people, uh, you know, getting ready to cross the street. You get all this crazy traffic. Now they're finally ready to go, and you get this girl walking her like daughter or sister or something, you know. And the kids kids slow, so they only make it halfway across when it turns. And they got to bolt it back. You know, those cars are just do not care. You know, they made it there, the skin of their teeth. He doesn't show them running back, but their, no, their body brilliant. language yeah. tells you everything. You get a guy running, just running a, running a light, you know, getting yeah. pulled over lamp post you get this guy and he's being followed and he's like oh my god look at that like i love you know yeah yeah this body language is that expected. third panel is like a guy who doesn't want to run yet but he's yeah. ready to it's great yeah. and then you know he finally he hides behind the lamp post and the guy can't see him and takes off and he's you know pulls out his hanky and I love um, how at the base of the lamppost, there's all these like cigarette butts and and things. Yeah. No, nowhere else. It just kind of grounds the grounds the scene where he is, and it's that staging again. That's like you were talking about the 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 depression era minimalist staging. Yeah. Yeah. You got this one with. Uh, Like these guys, I don't know what the hell they're doing. To be honest with you, I like hide and seek. Video, I guess? Whatever it is, yeah, I, it's looks like a hide and seek thing. Yeah, but they also look like they're like twenty year olds. <laughs> this is a, this is a thing. <laughs> Eisner draws like he'll draw a kid, and then immediately they'll they'll look like they're adults. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what this is? Unless they're like little little kids, but yeah, yeah, they're, they're just trying to hide, I guess. Well, I mean, this guy in the middle right here definitely has a comb over, so he's not even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the town dunces all got together, and <laughs> yeah. And then you got the sewers, you got all this stuff washing down, you got the lottery ticket going down, and uh, a parking ticket, uh, termination of service, you got like an old bill here, and then you got like a Dear Charles letter. I hope you understand when I tell you that I am going to get married next Sunday. I hope you will not be too hurt in view of our relationship these past few months. I've known for a a long time now that I want uh, that what we had was just physical and that it could not really last. It's like, what are you thinking there, Will? Well, you, you, you read this book, you'd be like, man, Will Eisner, not a happy guy. So dramatic, man. It's so dramatic. And you got the river here and his kids got a paper boat. You know, and then mom calls him in and, oh, and it, he, you know, paid attention at the wrong time and it went down the sewer. I like that one a lot. It's not much to it, you know? Yeah. I think Eisner's best when he's so, uh, when he plays on innocence a lot mm -hmm. more. I think sometimes when he plays with adult 
for a man who was so concerned about adult things and adult yeah. themes, like he wanted to do adult comics, he wanted things to be raised. When he hits children playing, he hits this certain innocence that really resonates. Uh, and I don't think he figured that out in his lifetime. I think yeah. he plays around with it a lot, but he, he, I think was overly concerned with this is what adults, adults read things about crime and sex. And, and, and in reality, it's like, man, when you just draw kids playing, there's something really special about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're on to windows here. And so, yeah, you got this, it's a, it's sort of, you know, a view of life. So you got this guy at the end of his life, you know, can't go anywhere, can't do anything, but, but, uh, you know, he basically gets to watch life happen outside of him, you know, goes to the fridge, wheels himself to the fridge, gets a snack, he's watching even more. It's like the, uh, the uh, window washer is like, having an affair i think with this oh woman. it's yeah yeah it's so good yeah <laughs> and he's so happy when the, when the husband comes in and he has to sneak out and like you know some flies through this window here and like like this woman's yelling at him so he goes to the now he's he's busted for watching life outside so he goes back to the fridge and watches life on television <laughs> it's great I love that character design too. I think mm -hmm. it's oh, this one here. He's cracking up about the yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. That's so good. <laughs> the crow's nest. Yeah, like this. Uh, this lady who's just up up in everybody's business. Yeah. Well, it's time to make Joe his supper, and then she like. So this is just what she does all day, basically, until yeah, it's time yeah. to make dinner. Now, The Observer, I think, is the most depressing story in this entire book. It's really fucked up. It's so bad. So basically, they watch this guy grab this girl in an alley. And he's rape he rapes her. Yeah. And the wife is like... Mind your own business. He's like, we should uh, we should yell at him or something. She's mind your own business. We have to call the cops. What's the number? No, Charlie. Like, what is this woman? They'll yeah. make you testify. You'll lose days of work. You know. And then yeah, and then you, yeah. It, it's oh God. It, it's hard to read. It's luckily it's two pages, right? Like that's right. The, and then he's like, it's that crazy immigrant from the next block. He beat up that Spanish lady like last week. What the, come on. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, oh my God, that poor girl. Shush, you don't even know who she is. Like, what? Here's your beer. Yeah. Oh. Ugh. And then they get a knock at the door. Just, uh, you know, just checking out a little trouble. We don't know. Uh, we don't know about any trouble, says the wife. You know, did you see this guy attack a girl in the alley? Look at him carefully. We didn't see anything, officer. Try the third floor. I did. Nobody saw anything, you know? And so, oh. And so, you know, they get, they get, go, go to bed, you know, and, you know, somebody, somebody like they're passing it off to somebody else. Like somebody yeah. will identify him sooner or later. It's not our business. And then he's back over at the window. Oh. But, you know, there's plenty of people like that. Sure. And then you get this like uh, like dry cleaner place. With the these two women uh, and a baby, you know. And uh, the, the 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 older lady, and there's a younger lady who's the mom, and you know the baby keeps crying, and she's like, you know, like you're the mother. What kind of mother are you? This baby's crying, you know. Help take care of them. And she's like, no, I got like way too much work to do. And so finally she feeds the baby and they hear a scream. And there's like a fire and they can't get out. And so like 
she grabs the baby and jumps from the jumps from the the window and like they're pretty high up as you can see you know and yeah. uh rips her skirt as she's jumping with the baby like don't do it and uh you know this woman is like like i guess she is overcome with smoke as this fire's coming like wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so it's wild then you get this older lady here and this guy just like sitting on his across the way in his window and she starts getting dressed and she finally realizes that he's there and she lowers it down and then you see him like <laughs> lower himself down to like try to yeah. get in a peek. There's things that are like you get the fire exit story. So bleak. Why mm -hmm. are we putting like why are you doing this? What's your reason? And then you get like privacy. Oh what a great slice of life. Like that's it's kind of cute. Like there is a cheekiness to it. Yeah, I don't know. Even though you were dealing with peeping toms, <laughs> so you're dealing. With, oh, he deals with a lot of peeping toms in this lot of entire them. story. A lot of, <laughs> so far, two people have burned in or three people have burned in fires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got disposal here. So this guy's smoking his cigar you know, at work. He's got his ashtray, and he just throws his ashtray of cigars out the window. Yeah. Um. And that and that and that's it. Like the window is a disposal. And you got this guy trying to break into this place, steals a TV, closes the window. There you go. That's it. And uh Peeper. You got this yeah. kid looking out the window, and clearly he sees something he shouldn't be seeing. So this guy hauls the kid off. You get this moment of of, of a break of just the window for a second, which is I love that. And then the guy comes and he's, you know, looking out the window. A lot of peeping toms. Yep. So prisons, you got the winter and this kid wants to go out and play ball. You get the, uh, the, the uh, affluent wife in the, uh, you know, the, in the, in the penthouse. Yeah. Um, you know, people work in their jobs you got this uh, woman who's like, clearly unhoused looking in to the rich house and you got the, the butler with the food and yeah. the thing, like looking just equally as sad out the thing, because you know, there's it's a life of servitude too, you know, it's an interesting look at why these are, these things are prisons. This is, a good one worm's eye view so you just see the feet yeah. of these people you know this guy walks up to this girl and uh i guess they're like lovers or yeah you would i mean that final panel suggests that they're lovers also what i find so interesting about that second to last panel on that page is they're facing the like he is standing behind her and they're facing the wall right so that i'm like what is that are they is that is he like got her up against the wall are they like having sex but yeah we don't know bottom of her skirt like yeah it's just i don't I, who knows i i kind of like the ambiguity of it it is a weird <laughs> thing to be like is he coming around her is he holding her is he grabbing yeah. her from behind are we supposed to think that she's not excited to see him in that moment? But they've Maybe? talked. It, who knows? Hmm. And then you got just like a, a crowd of people walking by. You got this smoldering cigar. Some uh, some somebody who's ragged clothes picks it up. Another person picks up a coin. Kid kicks a box. This dog looks in, and then it's just raining, and the dog is like looking in to try to get in. It's just all this stuff happening out of this this view. And then you got this guy like in a like a clearing here between buildings, you know, it's like alleyway yeah. area. Just kind of going off about love and the power of love. Yeah. 
acting it out. It's like Shakespearean, you know, it's like, uh, yes. Yeah, definitely. And then you build up as his through his emotions. It's a wild. And it movie. ends with a cough, cough. Yeah. So the, is like, is this a drunk guy just yelling in the middle of the we? But he doesn't have a bottle. And if no. he was drunk, Eisner would definitely draw a bottle, right? Like that's part of the. He is. He's got a. He's okay. got a. Flask. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. Walls. So you got this guy papering this stuff up. Space. This guy's dreaming of the city. He packs his stuff up. Leaves the leaves the rural area. You know, comes to comes to the city. Gets all settled in, and then does nothing but dream of the country. Yeah. And freedom, you got this guy in a jail cell. He's finally released, you know, gets his stuff and heads on into the city and goes into this place and he's curled up the exact same way in his in his little apartment, you know. Smaller than the jail cell. Yeah. Right? That's the I think that's the thing that he's trying to make, or the joke that he's trying to do. Joke yeah. probably not the right word, but I love this silhouette of this building in the background on the this one here yeah that one there yeah there's a silhouette within a silhouette oh it's great mm -hmm. uh, just makes the city feel wide yeah you want to pour over this stuff for a while there's so much that you can infer from it and look at the way he must have used white medium maybe here or something mm -hmm. because there's like yeah grass kind of popping up from here he does a lot. If you look at, uh, so I have the like contract with God artist edition, uh huh, and it's there's so much white media on it. Really, he, he's seems like the kind of guy who's just like, oh, it's there, I'm gonna use it, and it's white out. It's not even like yeah. it's bad. It's, it's the shitty just, white out. It's, it's like the shitty white out. Point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some of his pages in person, but it's been a long time. I can't recall seeing that, but it's very likely. So you get this one. It's called Maze. And so you got this old arcade here. Um, arcades, kids, were places where you would go to play video games because nobody had them at home. Uh, and in fact, at this time, He's not even thinking about video games because the only thing he's probably hip on is pinball. Pinball machines, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what this entire story is, which seems so weird. Yeah, it's just like we're comparing uh, a police chase, yeah, to a pinball machine, <laughs> to yeah. a pinball game. Yeah, so you got this guy like running through the the arcade and through you know like exits and hopping walls. Meanwhile, this guy's playing pinball. Bing, 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 bing. He's running, trying to get over fences. Ding, 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 ding. Onto this. a roof, over a thing. Comes around the corner, and the cops are there, you know, and they got him. And yep, that's exactly what it is. It's like you know, yeah, the, him him trying to run through the maze of the city. This is such an avant-garde film thing. Yeah. Right? It's like, hey, we're going to superimpose the pinball machine on top of this running. And it's such a weird thing to do. <laughs> Whenever you see it in film, you're like, why did they do that? Whenever you see it in a comic book, it's even weirder. It's like, yeah, well, we, don't, we don't have the sound. We don't have the movement. We don't have the... Um, it's, it's a wild... It's just a wild choice. It is. I don't know that it doesn't work. I think it it works, but I I can't put my finger on whether there's like another way to use this. Yeah, I love that panel, that top panel of the you know the guy running down the. This but it's one? almost it's almost like Hitchcockian, right? Like it's it's this yeah. north by northwest yep. <laughs> view. It's very it Orson Welles almost right. Like here's this. It looks like a set piece. It doesn't look like a like a city at that point. It looks yeah, like yeah. we're running down a, a soundstage. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that's wild. And you get this one, Man's Castle, he, you know, goes to his place and he's got a million locks. <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden he realizes, oh my God, you know, somebody's broken in and busted all of his stuff up. Somehow. You got Bullet Boy. This one's locks. crazy. What's that? Masterful locks. Yeah. Like, yeah. The geometry in those locks is perfect. Yep. So this one, it's it's uh, bulletin board. I hate walls. Call Helen. So this guy's walking down the street. Do 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 do. Kicks a can. He's. A, I love this where he's lighting the cigarette oh, and the lighting on that. So good. Uh, you know, just putting the hands in the black. Yeah, and there's clearly white media there too, right? Like it's it's coming. Yeah, over yeah, yeah, yeah. For the flash, right? Yeah. And then you know he, he illuminates the call Helen. You know thing and so of course he writes down the number and he goes and he calls helen and helen's like please you know i don't know you or how you got my number who are you and then her husband comes over you've been uh, getting one hell of a lot of calls lately what's going on get off the line creep yeah now get the hell down to the store and get me some beer we're all out and then she goes down and you know like uh the guy's just like chilling under a stoop drinking like, wow, man. And she's bringing her, her beer back. And there's clear, like, things. Eisner does a lot of iconography and, and dress to be like, okay, is this ambiguous? Is this person probably a, a hooker or is this person yeah. probably a thing? But she's got this giant cross necklace on, right? Like, this is a good Christian woman. She is right. not, the, she is, she really is telling the truth in this moment. Yeah, but he's like a, a deadbeat. He's wearing a wife beater, first of all. He's got his pants unbuckled, unbuckled. and his, and his uh, yeah, uh, his buckles undone, and it's coming down and like it's unzipped. You know, clearly this low life guy. Um, and she's carrying a six pack of beer back to him. I heard this weird fact that the reason the six pack exists is because the beer companies back in like the '60s or whatever. Uh, figured out it is that it's the perfect size for a wife to carry home from the grocery store. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, man, that's a that's a wild thing. But also, did Eisner also know that, and that's why he wrote this thing? Yeah, that, maybe. Like that's just interesting. Weird, weird sexist facts from the that's from a, the past. Yeah, that's a wild. That's wild. So here we go. Enclosure. This is about this is what's about to happen to me. Our one little window in the living room that gives any light yeah. is about to be covered up by a giant building. <laughs> um, so yeah, they uh, they they have this like great view of the bay, and gets you know <laughs> six months bug. later. Yeah, you escape. You got this bug, and it's just his journey trying to like trying 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 to to climb up, you know, this wall and falling and. This is an ant. It's not a cockroach, but. And then that's it. It's just like crawling yeah. around. There's really no narrative to it other than the struggle of, <laughs> of, of, of life, I guess. Yeah. It's just uh, constantly. The walls have ears is a great one. So yeah. you got this guy and you can hear this like stuff and he hears the neighbors like having sex. I'm sorry, Gertie, I can't. Oh, for Christ's sake, come on, come on. Like he's having erectile dysfunction or something. And then uh, like, oh, Jesus, Harry, what are you doing? Stop it, stop it. Oh my God, are you some kind of deviant? Cut it out. And he's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, and then, oh, for Christ's sake, don't cry. I tried. I want you to go to sleep, Harry. It's late. And then, uh, you know, Harry, what time will you be home? And then they get into the elevator together and it's, he's like, <laughs> you know, I, I know what you were up to last night. Yeah, and he's some studly man, right? Yeah, like that I think it's really funny. <laughs> comparatively. And that's a great drawing too. I love this guy. Like yeah. this, this is this moment in the in the um elevator too. Privacy, you got this wall. So this is this is the framing of it. You got this yeah. wall and you got this girl playing music, sunbathing naked. 
Uh, and on the other side of the wall is this guy, you know, kind of sitting out reading his book. And then he starts stacking these books, uh, or bl uh, these boxes up, and he climbs up to the top of it. And he's like, hi, I'm Irving, uh, Irving Kivich next door. I ain't seen you uh, at the checkout at the, uh, at the superfood. Ain't I seen you at the checkout at the superfood, you know? And then, like, she just kind of looks up at him, like, huh? And then he falls, and she just goes back to doing what she was yeah. doing. And he's, Correct. like, knocked out. His figure work, even at such a small scale, is so good. Yeah, it, like, yeah, it really is. That's you know, that's the key to a lot of cartooning is figuring out how to draw small gestural figures. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of that you're gonna do as a cartoonist. So yeah. better, better get going on it now. So you got backdrop here. You got these people like having having dinner, but like, I guess the wall's painted to look like they're in somewhere else, fancier. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what this is, or what that has to do with anything. I think it's just a guy in the back, this, the, the background. Yeah. Things, it's just a guy talking to a woman upstairs, but it's just like, it's just a back alley. Right, right. right. Here's this seemingly high-end restaurant because you can see, like, the guys. Oh, the, I see. It's in the same. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, same. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, the way that it's cut, it almost felt like another panel. Yeah. And then you got these artists, like, selling their stuff here. And this woman walks by. This kind of, I guess, is, that, is I can't tell if that's a mural or a wall. I think it's a wall. It's got to be a wall. People are sitting on it, right? Yeah. You get this guy waking up. Love you know, this. Getting ready, ready for the day. You know, very important. Can't be late for work. Goes out and just sits and watches them like destroy this building. And yeah. I love this drawing of this destroyed building. This you uh, I, I look at a lot of Eisner and I go, okay, what are other people pulling from? This feels so uh Keith Giffen Trencher. To me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, it's just yeah. like this really thin, scraggly line. There's something about it that I, I don't think Keith Giffen was necessarily like, oh yeah, the, you know that one panel in in that one Will Eisner book. But it's such a weird, it's such a different line that Eisner's using. Yeah, where everything's in a holding line and there's nothing being spot blacked or anything like that and he didn't go crazy on like he could have made the inside of these buildings a lot darker and stuff you know there would have been yeah. a shadow in there but it's because he didn't go crazy with the wash that it looks so striking right and you get the last frontier and you got this woman like uh growing crops in this thing you know but they're about to build this like multi-housing unit on right where she's growing stuff yeah urban urban garden so you got the block now in the big city a valley formed by the uh, by section of steel and concrete cliff dwellings it's called a it's called a block and its inhabitants to it it's the whole uh, to its inhabitants it's the whole world so you got the old neighborhood this guy is going back to show uh show him the uh you know where he grew up and you know like oh you know his uh is Guido around? Oh, he died five years ago. You know, like the block is just changing on him. You know, he like runs into this guy. Yeah, I was just a kid, you know, like not much yeah. has changed yet. Like everything has changed. You got the neighborhood girl. So you got this guy, this sophisticated party that this guy is going to, you know, it's like up uptown and, you know, a bunch of elite people are there and you know he sees this beautiful girl and you know goes and starts talking to her she gives him a number and he's like uh looks like you scored that's some classy chick and then he rips it up and he's like what and it's a waste of time he's like what uh call her up i seen you get her address hey where are you tearing it up she's from my neighborhood so she's not yeah. 
you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not good enough. He's got to go downtown. Yeah. This is uptown. That's right. <laughs> it's great. So then you got all these people, you know, they're they're leaving, they're leaving the the block, you know, and uh, they're sad. This is like everything that they've known, you know. They she's crying, the woman's crying as they're you know pulling on out, and yeah, clearly the the son is trying to get the parents to go move out into the suburbs or yeah something upstate. Mm-hmm. They get there and all they can hear is like cricket sounds and. People are having a barbecue and they just they just don't fit in. They're walking down the street. This looks like a like a New Yorker co- cartoon, doesn't it? Yeah. The way that it's framed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they just they just couldn't hack it. They're back. <laughs> they're back at the city. Yeah, it's great. Yep, they're moving back in. And you just get this moment of like everybody like chatting and it's wild. It's wild. The good street. So you got this guy, uh, I guess he's like, uh, you know, a homeless guy or something. And he's checking out the way people getting into Rolls Royce. He's smelling the flowers, you know, he's waving to the people in their house. He's kind of jogging along with these people. <laughs> you probably think that he's trying to chase them down. You know, there's good trash here. And then the cops are like, get the hell out of town. So, so he has to. And you got aliens here. This is called aliens. So you get these people watching as they're moving like a, a piano into this this house. And uh, yeah, I don't really remember what happens in this one. I think this is all like. the starting of like gentrification right i think is that what oh, he's yeah, yeah, playing yeah. around with it's like the block changes it gets yeah yeah we knew on the block got any money yeah 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 yep and then there's all of a sudden like all the places are vacant the high rent district this one is i uh, one of the most gorgeously illustrated ones like that, the lights coming off of that car, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. He's got really dark, and he's got mid tones, and he's got you know great highlights in it too. You wonder if this is towards the end of the book. Is the ink water is the ink wash darker because he's right. been walking out his brushes a, a, a bunch? You know, he always talked about change your ink water constantly, though. So who knows? Um, but I love the I love the reflection of the water on here. He's really good at stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So they go. They she. Uh, they're on a date. They're or whatever. They're rich people. In this Rolls Royce, drops her off at this hotel. You know, he pays the the guy money as he walks off. He's not really rich, you know. He's, so he goes down downtown, there. and then she pokes her head out of this stoop. And so it's like another play on the one that he just did. Yeah. You know, downtown is not the place to be, but plenty of people trying to fake like they're from uptown. And then you got the Belmont Avenue gang. They're coming. The Belmont Avenue gang. These guys are coming. They're they're here. And uh, (laughs) the gang is just a bunch of little kids. It's a bunch of little kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. And here's gentrification where these people kind of come in and they're like, you know, picture this. And these guys are kind of over here, like uh, drinking in the corner and they're walking off and there goes the neighborhood. Because you had like meat and fruit and just this like thing. And now you have an emporium of food, you know, fancy meat. Oh, yeah. It's straight up fancy meat. Fancy meat. (laughs) And then they go back to this great washed drawing of of the kids. Oh, interesting. I don't have that. You don't? Oh, that's the end pages for me. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I got I got nothing for for one, two, three, four, five, six pages. I got nothing. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. I've got a little bit of thing, but that is that is 
the actual end pages on my yeah, book. Okay. Interesting. That's a great drawing. Yeah, it really is. Wow. Well, that is that was a great look at this stuff. All I I've got uh, just something to kind of share too here. Um, as long as we're talking Eisner, yeah. So like my uh, like I said, my 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 dad grew up. You know, he was born in twenty eight. So in like nineteen forty, he would have been twelve years old. Um, a friend of mine was uh, renovating his basement in Minnesota, and he tore down the walls. And the walls were all insulated with newspapers from when the house was built, sewn together. That's how they used to insulate these places. They would just get stacks of paper and sew yeah. it together. And that would be it. Like, how flammable is that? Um, but it was all newspapers from, like, the late 30s to the mid 40s. And he was able to pull out a couple of... Oh, like, so cool original spirit uh, yeah. inserts you know this is from october 13th 1940 from the minneapolis star journal which isn't even a paper anymore it's the star tribune or the pioneer press but um yeah this was when they the comic book section so uh yeah. uh night what year was superman or what year was like famous funnies and stuff created that was like not too many years before this yeah that's so the funny. comic book is new. Yeah. So yeah, they would just like collect strips from the weeks prior and then put them into this Sunday. Like you would get a, a full spirit comic. And look how much like, you know, this is pretty The color is, is insane. Yeah. These are just so cool. There's a couple of them. I've, I've got a couple full funny sections too. And these are, are this is real early spirit stuff real early that's yeah yeah this is people yeah. say okay so like lady luck all of this stuff with like uncle sam lady luck all of these were eisner studio stuff that right were coming so out ford davis right so he so he made a deal with the paper companies to distribute these things and was just basically putting stuff out mr yeah. mystic yep so, you know, these are pretty damn rare. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, he just had like, he's got a few of them still at home, but. Uh, the colors are so vibrant. I guess they? because they were just like in darkness. Yeah. <laughs> There's no sun touching it. No sun, dry as hell, you know, uh, are just yeah. perfect. So these things really lasted. So I have i don't have them. I want to like almost want to frame it. Yeah. Or something I don't know. Like I don't know how what to do with it to be honest with you. But I want to protect it, but I'm not going to like slab it or something cuz I'm so against that crap, but Yeah, yeah. You know, it's meant to be looked at and and read and touched. But man, it's just a it's just a really cool artifact. So yeah. That's so cool. That's what uh that's that's what it looked like when you were reading the spirit in 1940. It's wild. It, wow. it, it blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for uh, coming on and sharing, uh, sharing this one. This is, uh, this was one to, one to, uh, to grow on. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one that I constantly pull off the shelf. That's why I was like, Oh, let, let's talk about a book that I don't know if a lot of people have read, <laughs> right. especially when you're talking about Eisner. These are not, this is not the book that people bring up. No. Nope, it's not, but it's it's a really great one, especially for like the exercise moments in it that he he goes. Yeah. Through. Um, so your Instagram is at uh, Art of Jamie Jones, right? Yep. And your website is Art of Jamie Jones. Uh, uh, my website is Bowtie Dot Press. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. All <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a lot of Jamie Joneses. Yeah. Uh, go figure. I will uh, I will make sure to get the right one in the show notes. It's the wrong one on the ticker tape. So don't go looking for that one. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, and then uh, you have a sub stack too, right? I do. That is also uh, bowtiepress.substack.com. And Substack is kind of where I've made my home a little bit 
a little bit more than uh, Instagram or social media and stuff. I still post a lot on Instagram, but it's a lot of like in progress stuff. Mm -hmm. Substack is kind of the place where fully formed comics are going. Okay. Okay, cool. Awesome, man. Um, well, uh, yeah, again, thanks for, for coming on and, and talking Eisner and, uh, yeah, uh, I hope people go and uh, check your stuff out and, uh, till next time we'll talk to you later. Yeah. Join my Patreon to see my work before anyone else. Plus score physical sketchbooks, mini comics, and commissions delivered right to your door and read in my new books, Something Seems Off and Three-Headed Pigman as they are made. Go to my website to order original art, commissions, and my books, Lost Angels, Spectral, A Showcase of Fear, Chaotic Neutral, and more. Gray Matter Drip, The Art of Chris Anderson is available now from Cosmic Lion Productions. Here are the upcoming conventions I'll be at at the time of this recording. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. It helps spread the word. Thanks.